It is my first video of the year, 2024. And today, I want to talk about the things that interested me from CES. Let's jump right in. Being the first major tech event of the year, CES is a great place to get a vibe of what's coming up in the next few months. Unsurprisingly, AI was a huge part of the conversation this year. There's dedicated hardware assistants like the Rabbit R1, which is this cute looking device that kind of looks like a playdate that utilizes design from teenage engineering. It aims to aggregate things like your music, calendar, search, and more into a simple interface. And in my opinion, it actually looks kind of interesting. I'll have to get it in the office to see what it's actually like and if it's worth the $200 price tag. But compared to something like the Humane AI pin, which costs way more and has a subscription attached to it, something that the rabbit does not need, it seems like a better package overall. Let me know if you wanna see more about it in the comments below. But I think as someone that appreciates more physical hardware stuff at CES, a huge focal point this year is that OLED is more common and accessible than ever before. We're seeing them in a lot of laptops, certainly in expensive premium options like the Razer Blade, Blade, but now even mid-range offerings like the new Zephyrus G14 have them as standard. The G14 was already my favorite laptop on the market with its perfect form factor and balanced specs. But for 2024, they made it slightly thinner, gave it a fully aluminum build. The newest CPUs and GPUs from Intel, AMD, and Nvidia, and best of all, an OLED display. We're talking a 3K resolution with a 120 Hertz refresh rate, and it looked absolutely amazing in person. Like no joke, I'm probably going to buy one for myself as the new daily driver, since it's everything I want out of a gaming laptop. On top of that, Asus also had a slate of new ROG gaming OLED monitors, including one that will hit 1440p with a whopping 400 80 hertz refresh rate and will peak at 1300 nits. It's super impressive, albeit pretty overkill, but personally what I'm excited for is the ROG Swift 32 that does dual refresh rate. What this means is that it will allow users to switch between 4K 240 hertz and 1080p 480 hertz meaning that you can prioritize motion for crazy fast competitive FPS games like Valorant or resolution for games that need to look very pretty. I gotta move on from Asus, but one last thing that got me super curious was their new ZenBook Duo laptop. This is the company's take on the dual screen form factor, which is something that we saw Lenovo try last year. And it's awesome because it can be a pretty handy kind of device if you need to do multitasking on the go. However, where the Lenovo dual screen laptop started at around 2,000 US dollars, Asus is offering the ZenBook Duo starting at an impressive 1,500 bucks. For that cash, you are getting two 3K OLED displays with a 120 hertz refresh rate, and it can be specced up to an Intel Core Ultra 9 and 32 gigs of RAM. Personally, I still think that dual screen laptops are pretty niche and they're not really my thing, but I think more than anything, it goes to show just how easy it is for companies to offer OLED displays on laptops these days. Looking beyond computers, I stopped by LG's booth to see what they got this year, and they took the opportunity to once again show off their transparent OLED TV. And that's because it is finally going on sale this year, albeit for a very high price. But something that I really liked was just how much their design team cooked this year. For example, they had this hybrid TV and speaker called the Duke Box. I promise that was not my Mike Tyson impression. But this thing is seriously sweet. It's got a transparent OLED panel which can play videos or show album art and media controls while vibing to music. And best of all, through the display, you can see vacuum
vacuum tubes, which not only make for warm sound, but they just look insanely cool. You can imagine that this whole setup could blend into like a classy looking office or library. Apart from that, the cracked design team over at LG also made this product called the Cinebeam Cube. This is a tiny and portable 4K projector that also has a super clean, minimalistic aesthetic. It weighs about three pounds, meaning that it's very comfy to carry, especially with the built-in handle. And of course, the picture looks rather nice as well to complement the design. There's no release information on this just yet, but I'd love to see this thing hit the market. And LG just Keep doing what you're doing. This stuff looks awesome. On the topic of projectors, I also stopped by the X Jimmy booth. I also did not know that's how it was pronounced, but the helpful rep let me know, so that's cool. I've never tried their products before, though I have certainly heard of them, but they're known for making some of the brightest consumer projectors out there on the market. And while the specs on this particular one are not the most balls to the walls insane, the X Jimmy Aladdin was particularly rad for other reasons. On the Inside, it offers something akin to an entry-level or mid-range projector with decent speakers all around. However, the real kicker here is that it has a surprisingly nice dome light on the bottom so that when you mount it on your ceiling, it just blends into the room and also fills the room with light. Compared to having the usual eyesore of a unit hanging up above, this one is rather inoffensive in terms of design, and I like that. There were also a lot of really cool accessories that I saw at this year's CES, like the new slate of faceplates for the PS5 Slim, along with matching controllers. Anchor also showed off a bunch of their Qi 2 charging accessories, including their new MagGo battery bank. I actually like the original one to charge my iPhone since it was fairly small but also offered 10,000 milliamp hours of capacity. But this one has a rather nifty screen to show specific battery percentage, and it will also output at up to 15 watts. There were also a bunch of cool cars to look at, like these new EV concepts from Honda. The one on the left, called the Saloon, looks so cool in person, and the car that they're co-developing with Sony, called the Afila, also made another appearance as well. For the press conference this year, specifically for the demo, they showed off driving it with a PS5 controller, which certainly won't be a thing if the car actually makes it to market. But the fact that they could do it is hilarious and almost makes me wish that it was real. And the last thing I had time to check out was the MSI boot, specifically to see the Claw. This is their brand new portable PC to go up against products like the Steam Deck, Legion Go, and ROG Ally. Though, as people have pointed out on the internet, it looks like they might have taken a little more than inspiration from the ROG Ally. Regardless, this handheld PC is seriously impressive. They're boasting the latest Meteor Lake Intel chips, which can be spec'd up to a Core Ultra 7, as well as 16 gigs of RAM, a seven inch, 120 hertz IPS display, Hall Effect joysticks, and even Thunderbolt 4. For sure, I would love to see what this thing is capable of, though imagine plugging in an eGPU to this thing. Could be pretty rad. MSI also had a slate of new accessories that looked pretty decent considering I've never been the biggest fan of their peripherals. But something that stood out to me is their brand new Force Xbox controller. It's always cool to see more third-party options on the market that give you more than the stock controller. And MSI's is surprisingly good, at least on first impression. Just like the Claw, they have Hall Effect joysticks, which is nice to see. There are also rear macro buttons, a swappable faceplate, which might allow for some personalization down the line. And most importantly, it works with your PC and includes the all-important low latency Xbox radio for fast and native compatibility with Xbox consoles. The helpful rep at MSI said that the pricing should land at around 110 US dollars MSRP, which actually undercuts Xbox's own Core Elite Series 2, though the idea is that down the line, retailers might give promos and sales to this thing, which could ultimately drop the price under $100, which for me would be absolutely killer. 
Apart from that, I didn't really have much time to check out everything else at CES. Though, it would have been nice to see the new monitors from Alienware and Samsung. But let me know, what is the coolest thing that you've seen out of CES in the comments below? And otherwise, thanks for watching this video on Denki Channel.